Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Jam and Jukebox Radio Show. I am your host, DJ Delta Dawn. So glad to be here with you on your Tuesday evening. And I hope that you've had a wonderful day. If you are in North Carolina listening tonight, man, did we not have a springtime day today. Uh, It just makes me want spring all the more um, because I know many of you uh, all up and down the East Coast have been hammered with winter weather over the last week or so, in some places the whole winter. Um, But today was exceptionally nice weather-wise. I was so glad to see it, and uh, I hope where you are that you were able to experience that as well. But if not, I hope that you're not still digging out from underneath snow, sleet, and ice, and all that stuff, um, no matter what. So welcome to our show. We're so glad to have you here this evening. And if you're brand new to our program, if you're a first-time listener, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you as well. And uh, we're very, very excited tonight about our show because Our guest um, is a resident of North Carolina, and any time I have the privilege of having someone from my home state on my show, I'm just all the more excited because I love to represent what I call home hometown talent or you know talent based out of my home state it it just is so very special to me and when you think about some of the incredible talent that North Carolina has produced you know via American Idol and some of the other major stage productions out there um it really is amazing uh the talent that we have just steeped right here inside of North Carolina and our guest tonight is no exception um I like to refer to her as kind of a rocker. I love her edge. Her sound is, um, oh, gosh, it is, it's like alternative rock, yet it's, you know, it's traditional rock, but it's a sound all her own. And um, she's no stranger to the stage. She has, you know, this has been second nature to her pretty much her whole life. And she uh, is a graduate of the Berkeley College of Music for Stage Performance, and uh, she just has a whole host of things to her credit. But one of the biggest things of late to mention is her brand new album, full-length album that she recently released entitled Bittersweet. And uh, it is indeed a bittersweet um, piece of music, undoubtedly. It is chocked full of some great tunes. I mean, it's one of those albums that you listen to from start to finish, and you just are blown away at how every song is so good. And as a matter of fact, we're going to play a couple of tunes from the album before we wrap tonight. And it was very hard for me trying to select which songs I was going to showcase here on the show because every song is so good. So um, we are just so, so proud and excited to welcome tonight to our show, Nicole. Hello. Hey. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. And please bear with me. I have had um, laryngitis for about a week and a half now. I'm on the backside of it, so I hope my voice doesn't crack too much tonight. But I just want to say thank you so much for being here. I, I know we've had a couple of uh, instances where we had to reschedule this thing, so I'm just so excited that you were able to you know, be available tonight to do this. I have really been looking forward to speaking with you. I'm excited, too. That was quite an introduction you gave me. <laughs> Thank you for all the time of it. Well, well oh, you're so welcome. Well deserved, indeed. And, uh, of course, for those who are listening who have never heard your music, they will be blown away like I was. And, and of course, as I was saying in the intro, you know, I'm always excited to speak to someone that resides in, in my state. And it's just exciting um, to see how talented you are. This project is absolutely off the chain good. I mean, congratulations on it. Thank you so much. I've got a lot of time into it, that's for sure. Well, and I can tell you the results do do represent that. And um, how long was this project in the works for you? Um, it was actually, there's actually two sets of um, recording time on the CD. There, there are three songs that are on there um, that were recorded two, three years ago. And then there were the other, you know, the other five were recorded in the past year. So it's 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 been like I guess two three years of recording. <laughs> oh wow! Just but it's you know it's, it may seem like it's been a long time coming, but gosh, what was it like for you when you finally had the finished product in hand and you were just like looking at it, going, "Oh my gosh, it's it's real! It's it's a it's now a reality." Uh, I was I was kind of like a little kid, I guess. I carried it around in my purse and I have it in my car. Like I still carry it around. 
um, you know, if, like, if I have a bad day or if I'm having a rough time or, you know, I'm not really feeling all that into doing something like a show, which never happens. I've had, that has yet to happen. Um, but, you know, if I'm feeling down, like, I can look at that, and that's my biggest accomplishment so far. Um, I'm actually really proud of it. <laughs> and you should be because it is a it's a great album. It's a, in, in fact, you know, it's one of my personal favorites um, that I've encountered for 2014 so far. And it's now in the running for probably one of my absolute favorite albums um, this year. I mean, it's not the favorite. I mean, it, it is such a good, good music. And um, what was some of your musical inspirations behind this project? Um, well, like, it seems like every other artist, relationships, you know, ex-boyfriends and people that I know or situations that I've been in. Um, the title of the album, it's, you know, it's based around learning life lessons. They're not always easy to go through, but they do make you stronger in the end. And, and I think that that's the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, like the front of the CD is it's in a tunnel and it's very fitting. Um, mm. But yeah, it's it's sometimes it's hard to go through things, but you know, in the end, you're stronger. So I I think that that's a good part of going through the different situations. Yeah, and if we didn't have them, we we wouldn't know our own strength. You know that, as they say, it's very cliche, but it's so true. And um, and yeah, and the album title, I mean, it just seems fitting considering you know um, this has been a project in the works for a little while for you now, and to finally have it come to fruition um, is rather bittersweet, I would say. Oh yeah, it's a lot of work to put a CD out. People think, oh, you go into the studio for like you know four hours, maybe, and then it's done. Um, that's not the case. It's like four hours yeah. per, like, you know, per verse or per, per chorus or per song, you know, depending on, you know, what your what changes you make as you go along. I mean, it's, it's not that quick. It's, it takes a really long time. Well, and, and people that have that perception definitely are not musicians because um, I think musicians have to be some of the biggest perfectionists on the planet. Especially oh, I definitely you go am. <laughs> when you go into the studio, I mean, you know, think about – all the time to get that perfect take of a song and sometimes it it can take many 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 you know tries and and revamps to get it you know to that point where you can say yes that's it and um you know and that's the mark of a great perfectionist i I can identify i don't i'm not you know musical in that way but i can understand that finishing touch has got to be just right before you can say yeah this is this is a wrap (laughs) you know it's a lot of work you know, brush off. It's 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 a big deal. <laughs> Most definitely, and that's why, you know, I think you know that perception of what it's really like to be in the studio is really again kind of goes back to your title being bittersweet because, you know, it's it's one thing to go out and play music; it's another to get in the studio and to actually record a project, a full length project, no doubt, and and to come away with it being completed, and. That is such a that is a sweet moment um, to be cherished because you know it's such a labor of love anyway when you're a musician. Yeah, we well, we had actually cut one of the songs um, that were supposed to be on the album, but um, I wasn't I wasn't quite happy with it, and it we I had co-written with another guy, and we kind of lost the message in it, but we recorded it, and and you know listening to it over and over again, I just. I just, it didn't really make any sense anymore. So, you know, despite all the time that we put into it and all the work that was put in, we still cut it because I, I just, I wasn't feeling it anymore. It wasn't, it yeah. didn't come out how I wanted it to. Well, so. you know, I, I talk to musicians all the time that talk about how, you know, they go through the selection process of, of songs that they're going to put on an album or an EP. And, and, you know, there are those songs at the last minute that at some point early on seem to fit the whole theme of the album. And then at the last second almost, it seems like, you know, no, this is not going to happen. And they, you know, they have their different reasons, just as you stated, for doing that. But in the end, um, you know, worst case scenario, you save it for the next project. I mean, it's it, that's the beauty of it, you know, but it is it is one of those things that, that's very, I think, a meticulous detail to the album concept that you're trying to convey to listeners, don't you think? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really important, I think, for sure. I mean, I'm putting, oh, this definitely. is like, this is my voice, like, this is how I get through to people, and it's representing my feelings, 
So if it's not just right, then it's almost like I'm lying, and I'm kind of a terrible liar. So. Yeah, and, and in music, it's kind of hard to fake it. I mean, you really, yeah. you know, it's probably one of the, the most real mediums out there that connects people like nothing else does, and um, it is a universal language. So, you know, you've got to believe what you're singing and what you're, you know, you're conveying, because if you don't, the listeners certainly aren't going to believe it, you know. Um, and and speaking of this project, you know, as I was saying in the intro, this, this was – uh, tough tonight trying to pick a couple tunes to play um at, you know at the close of the show because every song on this project is just absolutely off the chain good i i can't tell you that i have a personal favorite there it's one of those albums that's a rarity because you can put it in and you can listen to it start to finish and you don't feel the need to skip over track to get to the next one i mean it is really that good do you have a favorite song on the album uh, Denial is my favorite, actually, the first track on the album. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a very, very good track. So. You there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, I'm sorry. Up. I thought I lost you. I apologize. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a great, um, I mean, I love Denial, and I also love Ever After. I love that song, too. Um, just the driving you know, beat, it's got that hard edge rocker sound to it, but yet, you know, it's, it's uniquely Nicole, but, um, I just love the fact that it's, it's kind of like when I heard your music for the first time, it's kind of like a real infused mix of alternative rock, you know, meets grunge, meets, you know, classic rock kind of all swirled together and to make this great sound. Um, is that, kind of where you were what you were striving for in um in your music oh it's exactly what i was it's exactly it came out exactly how i wanted it to um oh, good. which which you know I, I i didn't think i'd be able to say that being you know as i'm i'm a little ocd like i'm probably borderline um <laughs> but it's <laughs> it's since i'm such a perfectionist i i didn't really think that i would be this happy with the cd um, I actually had a producer before the one that produced this CD, and um, he was pushing me to be more towards, like, the Rihanna sound, if you can imagine mm-hmm. that, like, R&B, like, hip-hop kind of sound. And it was fun. I mean, it was music. It was recording. It was my singing, pushing me towards my singing career. And so, I, of course, I was excited about it. But once I met, like, the producer that I had for this album, it was a whole different story. Like, I just I couldn't wait to do the next thing it was Mm. it was it was unreal i mean i'm I'm pretty good friends with the producer that i have like i probably see him once a week um and you know it's it the relationship is there also so it was easy to go into the studio and record the songs even you know the ones that were were hard to record when i say hard to record you know there are some that are uncomfortable to 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 do to display and to show everybody like monotone is a really personal song. Um, we had to redo that song quite a few times because I was crying while I was doing it. It's just, it was oh, just wow. really, it was really raw. It was very, very. It was happening at the time that we were recording it. Oh so wow! It was, it was it was hard to to do that song, but I'm I wanted it on on the album. Mm-hmm. And I'm not really a big fan of slow songs normally, but that one came out just how I wanted, you know, with the war beat, like the drums in the beginning. And, you know, it's not so slow that it's like, oh, okay, next song. You know? It's- yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um, and it sounds like, you know, that you found your niche in music, um, you know, that you, you tried a whole different genre and style initially, but this seems to be more – kind of your fit and your niche would you say that is the case or no oh definitely um this is the kind of music that i like to listen to um paramore is my favorite band so you can definitely hear the influence in the cd (laughs) um but yeah edgy pop rock like that's that's right up my alley um people have talked to me about doing country like my parents have always thought that i should do country and i mean they're supportive of what i do but um they always really thought that you know, I would be good at country, and um, I thought about being, like, a Christian artist for a little while, but, um, yeah, this is, this is just what I wanted to do. This is just right. Well, (laughs) you know, in, in, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, that's the beauty of being an indie artist, because you're not 
boxed into a record label that tells you you've got to do this style and you've got to do your music this way and you've got to put out this this number of songs and they've all got to be produced like this. I mean, you have great latitude to spread your wings and do whatever you want to do musically. But, you know, if you found a genre or a niche that really that you click with, the music is going to be a whole lot better than than trying to fit yourself into a genre or a box that necessarily you don't fit into, you know. And the listener, when they get your project, you know, and they get that album that you put out and it's something you really believe in, man, the listeners are going to get that, you know, all day long. Um, And that's going to come across as being more realistic in, in, you know, in who you are as an artist by being able to put out the best product possible. I mean, I really got that from this music. As a matter of fact, it's interesting that you mentioned Paramore because when I initially heard your music, I not only thought of them, but I thought of um, Avril Lavigne as well. Um, She has that same kind of grunge rock sound, but she can be, you know, she can do a ballad and it still be rocky, but, you know, she kind of um, takes it all into a lot of different places, but it's still uniquely her. And that's kind of the way I saw your music when I was listening to it was that you, it kind of went in a lot of different places, but undoubtedly every song I knew this was Nicole, you know, so it's it's very signature style to who you are as an artist, which I think is is a great identifier. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's it's important to have your own, to have your own sound. Oh yeah, definitely, and uh, I think it it helps to shape you as an artist as as you go forward, and your fans come to expect you know you to to put out certain music and that is going to appeal to them, but also that they will know without a doubt is yours and yours only. So that's really cool. Um, so talk about some big things. I know you've got some big shows coming up pretty soon, um, and uh, talk a little bit about what you've got going on there. Um, well, we have a show on Saturday night um, in Raleigh at the Whiskey, um, and then we've got another one. Uh, we're doing a Battle of the Bands in Fayetteville at the Rock Shop on March 23rd, um, and then we've got um, we're doing a show on March 2nd at at Architect, which is in downtown Raleigh. Um, it's a it's a it's a nice venue. It's it's um it's it's a, like a quote not a fancy bar but it's like a fancier look like a more classy bar i guess um and then um and then there's one that we have one more one on march 8th also um i can't think offhand where that one is at yeah i, th- I believe the name of that is deep south oh deep south that's right yeah, <laughs> yeah. To uh, yeah thank and, you <laughs> And for any listeners out there who are not North Carolina based, I can tell you that um, these establishments that she is that she's going to be performing at are, are pretty reputable, and she's performing in in Raleigh, which is one of the biggest cities in North Carolina. So she's really getting out there. And these are not fly by night clubs, by the way. They are. I mean, you've really got to have some um, finesse to be able to get in and play. And uh, no doubt. Uh, Raleigh is recognizing that you you are um, who you are as an artist, and um, I, I'm so glad that you're getting to play these spots. Yeah, I'm excited to go out and play. Playing shows are my favorite. It's my favorite thing to do, besides being in the studio. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, well, now let me ask you. You know, you've got this great album out now. Are you uh, planning to make any videos to go along with any of the songs on the album? We really need to make a video, yes. Um, I, I haven't quite figured out which one I want to do, but um, I have, like, a section on my phone where I write down lyrics as I'm, not as I'm driving, but when I'm at the stoplight. Um, or yeah. if I'm at work and I think, <laughs> if I think of something, you know, then I write it down in this in this one section on my phone. Um, and then I have, like, a separate section for, like, the music video ideas. And I've got, I've, I've acquired quite a few now. Um, I know where I want to do it, and I know you know, a few things that I want to incorporate into the video. I just don't know which song to do it for. Um, Going Down is a single, so I'm I'm thinking maybe it would be the, would be that one. But I've I've actually been working on more material, so I don't know if we'll wait and do it for the next um, record or, or if we'll do it sooner than that. It just depends. Well, please keep us posted because um, if you do put out a video, especially this year, um, and I know that just like going into the studio is a huge undertaking and it, you know, it costs money and, and so forth, but it's, it's always cool, you know, if you can do a video, um, 
to any of your songs and, and I can tell you you've got some great material to that are video worthy. So I would love to see stories unfold on screen. Um you know that that go with these songs because they're awesome songs and um but yeah we would love to promote it put it on our website anything like that to just get it out there so um listeners can view it and and really get to know more about you and as an artist and um what other big things have you got you know on on hand this year besides playing it I mean you've got some great gigs lined up do you have anything else up your sleeve that you want to share with the listeners um, well, the biggest thing that I'm focusing on right now is Warped Tour. Um, we're, we're really trying to play Warped Tour. Um, besides signing to a label, which I've done, and getting up the indoor station, which I've done, Warped Tour is next on the list. So that's that's what I've really got my focus on right now. Um, there's an Ernie Ball battle of the bands um, to do to play Vans Warped Tour. Um, so if you're not invited, that's the way that you do it. And, you know, I'm, I'm still early out, so I wouldn't be invited yet. Um, they've already got their lineups. So it's, it's not even a possibility. But to play Battle of the Bands and then, you know, be chosen for for Warp Tour would be unreal. Um, I'm, I'm really pushing for that right now. That is, so. a, I mean, God, I have no doubt that you are going to be doing that um, sooner rather than later. I mean, that is, you know, for listeners who may not be familiar with Warp Tour, that is, the that's kind of like the creme de la creme if you're a rocker to go and yeah. play warp tour especially early in your career because it really it's like a springboard it kind of just launches you you know over and beyond what you could do on your own or with management or publicist or whatever um that is such massive exposure um for an artist so i certainly hope you get you know that you get that opportunity because ma'am um if they don't select you it, it, they're going to be missing out. That's all I got to say. <laughs> oh, it'll happen so, eventually. If not this year, it's going to happen. You know, coming up soon. It's it's going to happen. <laughs> well, with when the I say momentum, I'm going to do something, it happens. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I love your I love your spirit, and your attitude, and uh, I have no doubt. And uh, so I know, and I'll have you on the show again, and you'll say, "Yeah, we're playing Warp Tour." So that is going to be uber cool. But um, I can't wait. But uh, well, I tell you, Nicole, you've got so much going for you, and it sounds like 2014 is already off to a tremendous start. Um, really, the end of 2013 when your album launched. But so many great things are happening for you, and I'm so excited to see what's to come. And uh, please, please, um, any anything new that you want to share, please let us know. We'd love to have you back on the show anytime to talk about it and just make sure that the listeners are staying up on, on what you're doing and when. And, uh, and I'm sure if they've not heard your music, um, we're going to play a few tunes here in a minute. They will be fans, undoubtedly, hands down. Well, I hope so. I hope to hear from all of them. <laughs> I believe that you, that you will. I think you've got a great career ahead of you, and you're off to an awesome start. So um, thank you so much for being our special guest this evening. You are awesome. And, uh, and again, thank you for your patience with us and trying to get this rescheduled a couple times, but so glad to finally be able to do it. And um, I wish you nothing but the best. And, hey, if, if I don't have a conflict sh- show schedule-wise, I'd love to get out to see you play because you're too close to me not to. So uh, certainly would love to try to do that. Yeah, definitely. That would be awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Nicole, and uh, best of luck to you for much continued success as you go forward, and uh, we will definitely be in touch with you very soon. Okay. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. It's our pleasure. Have a great evening. You too. Thank you. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, we've been speaking with Nicole, and uh, let me give you a little bit of information on her. Go check out her website. Her name is N I K O L Music M U S I K dot com. Nicole Music dot com, and there um, you can find out. You know, she has a list of all of her tour dates. Um, and great bio, great links. I mean, it's an awesome website. Um, you can also follow her on Facebook and Twitter. On Facebook, she is Nicole Music. And uh, on Twitter, um, also, you can find her there. Um, so go follow her, like her Facebook page. That's the best way to stay up with um, indie artists that you love because um, – they're always tweeting. They're always promoting themselves and their music. And they have to. A lot of it is, is self-promotion, self-funded. And and further, if you love 
her music, I would implore you to, you know, not just listen to it. If you really like it and you want it to be a part of your, your personal collection, then buy it. Um, her album, Bittersweet, is available, um, you know, and you can get that from iTunes, Amazon, you name it. And uh, if you go to her website, you can... Um, you know, be connected there. Please support these artists. I mean, these indie artists are self-funded for the most part. They don't have major record labels backing them, throwing money to promote them and get their music out there. So really everything that they do is self-funded. So the more that we can support them, the more music they can make and they can continue to do what they love and which is provide us some awesome music because, in my opinion, indie music is some of the best around and better than mainstream uh, for the most part in many cases nowadays. So, um, Nicole, thank you so much for being our special guest this evening. And uh, as we close this evening, I'm going to play a couple of tunes from her brand new album, which I tell you, you're in for an awesome treat here. Uh, we're going to play uh, Going Down, which is the latest single release. And uh, as she said earlier, and um, also, let me get these queued up here. I apologize. Bear with me one moment. Okay, and also we're going to play Ever After, and we'll close with Denial. So many thanks again to Nicole for being our special guest this evening. Thanks to all of you for tuning in, and if you're brand new to our show, welcome aboard. We're always glad to have you here. We will be back here again tomorrow evening. Um, and starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, I'm sorry, 7 p.m. Eastern, and uh, we hope that you can join us at that time. But in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a great night, all, and we'll catch you right back here tomorrow night. Good night.
she climbs the castle wall. In through her window he crawls. One kiss and she's hit.
Thanks for listening to tonight's show. You can connect with Jam and Jukebox Radio Show on Twitter at Jam and Jukebox or on Facebook at Jam and Jukebox Radio Show. Check out our website at thejamandjukebox.com. Also, follow us on Blog Talk, where you will be always up to date on every episode as we add it. Each episode is available for immediate download upon the conclusion of each broadcast, and as always, on iTunes. Thank you for joining us. 